Actually, I'm sorry. If you'll stand while we pray. We just, we just want you to get a little exercise. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just lift up today to you, Father. And Lord, uh, we're just so humbled by the opportunities that you put before us to just to follow your directives and your word. And Lord, we just lift up today and just ask that your spirit is upon this building. Father, we just ask that uh, we don't make it about us or what we've done, Lord, but just opportunities that we have to serve you, Lord, and to just to get your word to uh, the nations. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for David and Melissa leading us in worship today. Um, and, Lord, we're just thankful for your people that are here. And, Lord, just uh, give us empathy. Give us uh, passion. Uh, just uh, give us uh, wisdom on what we can do to spread uh, your kingdom. We love you and we praise you. Amen. All right, now you may be seated. Okay, a little bit uh, different today. Uh, today is what we call uh, Mission Sunday. We have a, a special visitor uh, here today. Um, I know this morning when we were talking about it, my wife, who has not been in service for a couple weeks, said, oh my gosh, we're going to church today and I, I don't get to hear David. I got to see you up on stage. So some of you may feel the exact same way. I'm sorry. I will try to limit my time uh, up here, but it's exciting for us. We are not pointing today to what Bridge Fellowship does. We're pointing today to what God has done and what opportunities you have to spread uh, the gospel uh, to expand the kingdom of God. So please don't take today as, as us talking about what we've done. We're here today to show you what uh, uh, your church, uh, God's church here in Martins Mill at the Bridge Fellowship is doing and what opportunities that you have to serve the kingdom even more. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, we're going to start off today with a video from the IMB and then we'll have Kyle Jones uh, speak about what that uh, is and means to the Bridge Fellowship. So Chris, if you'll go ahead and, and play that video, we'd appreciate it. So what we want to do is just ask you about your time on the field. Oh, I could tell stories upon stories. Do I take the glasses off? Or? All right. We want the uncut version. Okay. I thought you were going to let me think about these questions before you ask them to me. <laughs> All right, you ready? First question. When you think back on your time overseas, what brings you joy? Mm. It's the relationships, sharing of life, the sharing of who Jesus is. The greatest joy of my time overseas definitely is people. 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 It's the people. 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 That the people that I got to meet. The lives that were changed. It's the people. People. It's definitely is people that flash before my eyes when I think about the joy on the field. What's one thing you wish you had known when you first went overseas that you know now? You really are not in control. I'm totally dependent on God. My best efforts would never get it done. Just been more genuine instead of more calculating. How integral my kids could be in ministry in a developing country that was very close to the gospel. How much the people become your family. That if you're not passionate about reaching lostness where you are, it's not going to grow when you go to a foreign land. To what degree did the Lottie Moon Christmas offering impact your work? There is no way we could have gone where we went without Lottie Moon. Tires were expensive to replace. I think he had the record in Kenya, changing 60 flats in one year. Wheelchairs. Textbooks. Housing. Surgery. Solar panels. Honda 185 motorcycle. It was kids on the back of this thing. Motocross all the way to church on Sunday. Torn Achilles, shoulder surgery. Without the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, I would be a mess. You know, I never would have gotten to the field if it wasn't for the local church. More than just an offering. Every penny that was given. Crucial, vital. Literacy work, education opportunities. A refugee center. Health care. We put in almost 300 wells. Trained church planters. Strategic. Lifeline. Cooperative effort for the gospel around the world. How has serving overseas changed you? I think no one could have told me when I moved overseas what it was like to be a minority. More sensitive to the needs of people around me. Rather than seeing a people group, I see people. More attuned to God's leadership. Ultimately confident in God. In your opinion, what do you think church leaders could do to increase involvement overseas? 
marry the legacies of the past with the challenges of the future. Model what it means. Go yourself. People in the church will follow the example of their church leader. We're giving them a vision for missions, not just as something that happens when you get on an airplane, but helping them become stronger disciples of Christ in their own community. If we're involved in global work, it will impact our local work. He's brought the nations here. Refugees, migrant workers. Entrepreneurs looking for new ways to get into countries. The opportunities really are limitless. Last question. Being a missionary is blank. Whew. Just being who you are as a Christian. A calling? It's something that Jesus has asked all of us to do. It's making disciples. A challenge. An exciting adventure. It didn't look anything like I thought it was going to look. Waking up every day and asking, where is the Father at work and what would He have me do? To live out my life for Jesus in front of other people no matter where I live. There's nothing like it, nothing. Okay, that is our um, IMB. So when we first started as a church, we didn't have any direct affiliation with any other, um, any other missionaries. And so uh, at the very beginning of the opening the bridge fellowship we said we want to be a part of missions and so we dedicated a, a, a portion of all the tithes and offerings go to the IMB and then also to the local cough van but I wanted to give you just some quick stats um, of what the IMB has done um, so 728,000 people heard the gospel 178,000 became new believers 102,000 were baptized, 21,000 uh, new churches were started, and 146,000 people became leaders, uh, were taught how to, to lead. And so we believe that this, this is just one way that we as a church can live out the Great Commission. And so we're, we will continue to be a part of that. We'll continue as a church to support that, that uh, group as well as the local cough band. In addition to that, is what you're going to hear uh, from the other speakers today. But I, I wanted to tell you that's we started with um, uh, with a, a portion of our funds going to the IMB, and we'll, we're going uh, at this time plan to continue to do that. Hey Trey, thank you, Kyle. And those numbers that you gave were were those all from this last year, Kyle? Or yeah, so the, all those numbers that Kyle gave were just from what the IMB did this last year. Um, you heard uh, mention Lottie Moon. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's an offering that they give. I know that um, Mr. Al Hoops uh, here was a missionary in the Philippines for how many years, Al? For 15 years. And uh, when our beloved uh, Diana passed away, he asked that in lieu of flowers or, or anything like that to make a donation to Lottie Moon. And you heard some of how that impacted those missionaries whenever that they were out in the field. Um, as Kyle said, when we first started, you know, we were a group of 20 meeting across the, the street in the gym for you first and then in the cafeteria at the, at the uh, school, and we wanted to be part of missions. Well, there's no way a group of 20 really we can reach out and, and discover, hey, how can we impact uh, the, the world for the kingdom of God? And so uh, we made sure that that percentages were, were going to uh, the SBTC, to the IMB, and uh, back at our roots, we've always said, you know, we were um, we were a plant by Lakeside uh, out of Canton, and so we describe ourselves as a church as um, a Bible-based church with Baptist roots, and so that's why we continue to give to the SBTC, which goes to the IMB uh, on that. But as the years went on, we had people within our congregation. We had a group that was going down to Mexico, and. Um, it was part of a group uh, called Crucible's Fire. You may be uh, familiar with that. And uh, we wanted to be part of that. And so we met with them. And as a body, uh, we, we gave a donation to help cover uh, expenses for them to go down there. The kids in the Sunday schools were just fired up about that. The teachers did a great job of having a map of where those um, um, those people were going and, and to do mission work. And so we recognized, hey, we really want to be um, more 
decisions based locally as well as the, as the IMB and so that our people can see the impact uh, of what they have because w with the IMB a lot of time there's so much great things going on but a lot of times we don't see it because it is so worldwide and it's such a lar large organization and so <clears throat> through people within our congregation we became aware of Mike and Cambria Robertson who um, do work in uh, Guatemala and so we met with them uh, we did a lot of background uh, research on them and what they do uh, a lot of people within our body uh, that have been involved in missions knew of them and had been down there some were impressed with them and so we wanted to partner with them and uh, help them with what they do so uh, Mike is out at another uh, church uh, today uh, Cambria and uh, two other members of her family are here to show us a short video and to speak to us about uh, what they do and more of where your tithing goes to help. They've got a table set up uh, out there, so if you've got questions, we'd love for you to visit with them afterwards where everybody's speaking today. There'll be uh, a table set up out there to where any other questions that you have that we can answer uh, for you. Of what, what else you can do? Uh, some of these things are international, like the Robertson. Some of these things are very local that you have an opportunity to help more with. So, uh, Cambria, if you'll go ahead and come up, and do, you, do they need to start the video, or you'll tell them when? Okay. Good morning, it is a pleasure to be here. Michael does send his greetings this summer. We have had to divide and conquer. So today I have Michaela and Kier with me. You guys will see in the video, our eldest daughter, Kiersey, actually graduated from high school and we already moved her up to college. And so that's kind of why half of us are not here or at least two fifths aren't here. So we'll go ahead and start the video. I'm gonna do a little bit of narration um, so you guys can understand a little bit more what you're seeing in the video. Make sure I'm not blocking anything. This was on May 25th. She's our first graduate. His name is Hector, and he is 11 years old. And this is his brother, Como te llamas? This is Cesar Adolfo. Cuantos años tiene? And he is 12 years old. I want to thank, first of all, each one of you, as when I watched that video by the IMB, I, it actually made me cry because I think of so much of what they described I could totally relate to. We can't be where we're at without you guys here. But each one of us, as he said, have all been called where God has called us to be, to use the gifts that he's given us. And some say, but well, I can't go, I can't do this. Well, we have one gal, she said, Kimber, I'll probably never come to Guatemala, but I can guarantee you anytime I call 
and need something, she'll mail it, she'll get it, or whatever I need done. And that has been her way of serving. So we just want to thank each one of you for being to us the hands and feet of Jesus Christ so that we can go and serve in Guatemala. Because we have seen, I remember when you guys came on as one of our supporters, we had lost another church and God brought you guys on. And many times when that has happened, we've either lost an individual supporter or a church just because of changes in seasons. Many times there's a month or two lay, like overlap and you just go, the Lord is so faithful and he knows exactly what our needs are. So the scripture verse that we have used as kind of our focus and mission for Guatemala is James 127. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless. This is to look after orphans and widows in their distress. The children that we work with, the majority of them are from single parent homes or they are orphans. We only actually have a couple of orphans, but most of the children have just mom. If they do have dad many times, um, it's not a healthy relationship. And so that has been our focus. Our ministry, I'm gonna give you guys just a little background for those who are not familiar with where we're at. We are located in Santiago, Zacatepeques, in Guatemala. So if you look at the map of Guatemala, Guatemala City is kind of in the center in the lower part of the country. We are literally only about 25 miles from Guatemala City. Um, we're not actually that far out, but it's a vast difference from city life to the little town that we actually work in. Our ministry is what we would call a wellness or a wholeness center. Our desire is not just to give the children food. They come Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and have a hot meal, but it's to teach them about Jesus Christ, using what God has given us as a way to reach them and teach them about who he is. So the kids are divided into two groups. They come, the first group usually comes about 10 o'clock in the morning, and they come and have Bible class. Then they will do their homework, and then they'll go down and have lunch, and then they'll head off to school. And they will repeat that same process in the afternoon. We have, normally we run about 70 to 75 children. In April of this year, usually March or April, we allow new children to come into the program because it's a very set number of children. So April 1st, our main lady who works with us, Shenny, she said, Cambria, there's 25 kids. Are you okay with that? I said, sure, why not? I'll come and see him. You start the work. And it was crazy. The first week was a little like kids not quite knowing where they were going, what was happening. But it really helps the children as they come into the program to have other kids that they're not alone. We've had some where just one family has come in the beginning and it makes it a little difficult and hard because they kind of feel awkward like everybody's watching them and seeing with them what they're doing. But it was a little chaotic, so now we are currently at about 85 children at House of Hope. One of the focuses is the moms don't know, the majority do not know how to read and write. So when they get help at House of Hope with their homework, it it's a huge burden lifted for the moms because the moms, most of the time, they just look at us and they're like, they're, they've way surpassed me even if they have a second grade education. Most moms have either never gone to school or maybe have a second grade education. So right now, I think we're at about 85 children, so it is, it is busy. While we are here speaking at churches this summer, we do have our staff and that's, you guys can continue to pray for them. They keep everything running smoothly and take the time with these kids. Everybody usually has multiple jobs. One of the thing is our cook is also our mentor, discipleship leader for our older kids who are 14 to 18 years of age. So she gets the food started in the kitchen with one young lady, then she goes out and she teaches discipleship class, goes back, back in, serves lunch. Um, and our gal, Shenny, who does more of the eight to 14 year old, that age group, she does multiple things too. So it's, it's very, very busy. One of the areas that we have also um, been able to focus on, the Lord allowed it. I'll give you a little bit of back history. I am a nurse and my husband, um, we would be considered like an electrical engineer. We met on Mercy Ships, which I'm sure some of you are probably familiar with that. At that point in time, um, we also served with a lot of other missionaries on Mercy Ships and we met um, a friend who was a dentist 
She is Guatemalan. So she currently actually, now that we're in Guatemala, is our dentist, along with another gal. And at our wedding reception, kind of going back and forth in history, my dentist from growing up, he said, would you guys be interested in any dental equipment? We kind of looked at each other, we're like, well, we've never done dentistry per se, but hey, why not? So at our wedding reception, almost 20 years ago, we were, we started the initial part of receiving two portable dental units. Well, now at House of Hope, we actually have two fixed units. This last year, the Lord allowed us to receive a brand new unit, which was an absolute blessing. And after that one was taken care of, we actually are in the process, I believe we're gonna be able to acquire a second one. So we've worked with these old units for years and the Lord is just like, here you go. So our dentists, they're like, this is uptown. Like we, <laughs> we're in business. We, they are absolutely loving having the units. And it's a way that we can also minister, not just to the children, but to our families. Um, if there is a parent, we usually have three to four times a month that the dentists are coming currently and they will do restorative work on the kids. So they'll do sealants, they will do fillings. Um, but we also have, if the parent has an emergency, we will see if we can work them in or semi-emergent so we can at least help them. We do charge the parents a small offering. And the reason is, is we have found over the years, if people are willing to invest in their own care, they are much more, they won't, how do you want to say it? They partner with you then. It's like we all have a responsibility and then we just use it to purchase more materials. It's a very small amount. Usually it's about $1.25. So for whatever they need. Um, but we also have to be very careful. We had a mom come in and she needed care. She needed actually the tooth to be removed. And so our dentist said, well, I can do it, but her husband did not want her to have it done. So we went back and forth with him on the phone. Finally, he said he agreed, okay, she can have her tooth pulled. The issue was there were some beliefs there as far as spiritual beliefs that he thought she would be cursed if she had her tooth removed. So in the process, our dentists, both are Guatemalan. That is an absolute blessing because they understand that and they know what they're working with and we're able to minister to the husband and to the wife in the process. And being in that setting, it also allows us to pray for her and to share with her about who Jesus Christ is. And that is the absolute bottom line in all that we do. Dental is one of the ways that we can serve the people, but it, a means to share with them about Jesus Christ. The other ministry that you guys have seen that we have had and we're in the process of transitioning is the sewing ministry. Um, we have had that for almost 10 years and we really felt this last fall like God was, we would be finishing that at the end of the year. And it's one area that I absolutely love, but my husband said, Cambria, financially, we can't do it. We need to, we need to shut it down. And I was really struggling and I was like, okay, Lord, this is what you've asked me to do. And so the end of September, we shut everything down. Um, and in Guatemala, when you have staff that you hire, for each year that they have worked, you need to pay them one month's salary. So all three of our ladies had worked for 10 years. So that was 10 months worth of salary. So we did all the legal paperwork, got them their checks. And literally two weeks after this happened, our main seamstress called me. She said, Cambria, and she was crying and really upset. I'm like, what's going on? Her son-in-law had just disappeared and left her daughter, who lives at home with her and her two children, with all kinds of work. And we clearly were able to see how the Lord had already prepared all this. If she had been working for us, there was no way she could have worked. The next three months were very, very difficult for her and her family. But because we were obedient, because I just thought, okay, we'll do it in December. December, you know, just kind of finish off the year, finish one season. But there was a very specific reason in this process, because she had received her 10 month salary and the other ladies, they financially had work and not work, but they had the finances for this time and season that they were walking through. And it was just like, Thank you, Father, for letting me see that. Because sometimes I'm like, do I have to be obedient? And Lord goes, yes, you do. You need to do what I say, because there's a very good reason for it. 
um, but being able to support her in this process. So the plan now is with the sewing ministry, we are actually working with the moms. They will be purchasing their sewing machines and we still have local people that we did sewing for. And so they will actually be taking and doing that local work because um, we really felt like the season as far as doing an international type thing and selling here in the States was, it was just a time and season that was ready to transition and for the ladies to be able to have their own business. Connie, our main seamstress is well established and she will be taking and doing a lot of the sewing that we did for another ministry and doing that sewing. A little side note, I still get to help. So I still get to have my hands in it because I absolutely love it um, and be with people that I love, but at the same time step away because our family is also transitioning with our oldest having gone off to college. So I wanna share um, two testimonies that came from that season. Maria was our other seamstress and she has four children we have worked with their family for about 12 years, for quite some time. And Maria um, was very strong in her belief, but she wasn't a believer. I knew that she hadn't made that commitment to Jesus Christ. And so in March, just this last March, and so we finished with sewing September, so six months later, we went and did a home visit, and as we were talking with Maria, her husband looked at her and said, tell her, Cambria, tell her. And I'm like, I looked at Maria, I said, what? And she's like, I became a Christian. And I'm like, well, you what? It just, I was so surprised. I was surprised, but I shouldn't have been surprised. I'm like, this is 12 years we've worked with her. And I'm like, Lord, 12 years. I just started crying. I was like, thank you, Father. I said, when, how? And that was a reminder of if she would have continued in the sewing center, she wouldn't have had the opportunity to go to church and be out of that environment. What we, what you guys sow, we don't know when that reaping season is gonna come, who gets to do the harvesting. But being obedient, the day-to-day, -day, being obedient and sharing Jesus Christ is the most important thing. Romari said, like, it's been 12 years when she first walked through our doors, but it took 12 years for her to come to that point, that understanding of who Jesus Christ was to her. And because we were obedient and closed the sewing center down, it gave her that transition season in her life. And I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> it's fun when he allows us to see those things and be reminded. We have another young man, his name is Daniel. He has been with us since he was six years old. And whenever teams come, they're like, Daniel and Jimena are two of the young people they remember. They just are, Daniel's a little charismatic young man, and now he's 19 years old. So he's a growing, I, it's hard for me to think of him as a man, but he is. He's grown up, he's mature, and he loves, he just has such a loving disposition. And Daniel came to me um, back in February, and he said, Cambria, I, my dad said I can't continue to attend House of Hope. Kids, when they get to 18 years of age, if they're still studying, we find a different capacity, but still allow them to be part of the program because we want to be able to support them in finishing their education. And our program is run on sponsorship. And so if the sponsor is willing to continue to support them, whether they are in school or whether they're studying English, I will continue to facilitate that in order for these young people to, to succeed and reach the goals that they would like to and what God has set before them. So I said to Daniel, I said, Daniel, I'm just curious, as we, him and I are talking, I said, do you know what would happen if you died today, where you would go? He said, well, I'm not sure. I said, well, you can be sure. I said, do you want to pray with me? And he's like, yes. I was like, Okay, Daniel, if I would have said in my own observation of him, I would have said he was a believer, that he'd already made that commitment because of the love of God that I see in his life. So I called our cook slash discipleship leader. I said, Thelma, we have got to go upstairs and pray. <laughs> so the three of us went upstairs and prayed with Daniel. 
you never know the influence you have in someone's life. But no, God has put you in their life for a reason. And however it looks, it may not look the way you think, but just be obedient in what he has called you to do and who he has called you to share with. So we prayed with Daniel and he was crying and he was yet at the same time so happy. And I just thought, okay, Lord, he had also been in the program for 12 years. Things take time, but when God has planted a seed, he will make it come to life. So we want to thank each one of you again for your support, your prayers. Um, I just drove down from Minnesota and I called the church and asked Mindy to pray for me and Butch was here and so they prayed for me and the Lord clearly kept me awake all day because I'd been up since 2.30 that morning and made it here to Texas by 10.30 that night. And let me tell you, the last half hour from Emory on was hard. But I just praise the Lord. Prayers make a difference. And thank you to each one of you for your commitment in not just supporting our ministry, but the ministries you have here in church. And look and see what God would have for each one of you because we have all been called. And it's a matter of whether I'll just say I choose to be obedient when he calls. So thank you. Thank you, Cambria. I will be sure and let Mike know that you did a much better job than what he's ever done here. Um, I'd like to go ahead and, and pray for them right now. Uh, Al, I'm going to bring the mic to you. Will you pray for the Robertson family? Lord, we come before you right now. We lift up the Robertson family to you. Father, I pray that you would bless their ministry. Father, give them wisdom about the decisions that uh, they make in leading others to Christ. Father, I pray you'd, you'd uh, give churches really a heart to support their ministry and to understand that it, it, takes, uh, it takes a willingness and a commitment to really support a family that's uh, put it all on the line. Father, I pray you'd just uh, bless them. Your Holy Spirit would just guide them. And I pray pray for them as they're absent from their work. Father, I know their heart is still there, and I, so I pray you'd comfort them in that. Thank you once again for their commitment to be obedient to your word. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Al. So, if you're not real familiar uh, with, with the Robertsons and everything that they do, uh, Cambria correct me on anything that, that I'm wrong on, but uh, the children there can go to, to school, but they have to have uniforms, correct? They can't go if they don't have uniform, which includes shoes and other things, so the Robertsons provide that for them. As she said, uh, they have three meals um, during the week where they pour into them and go through scripture with them also. They feed them first from visiting with Mike. He said, you know, these kids can't be expected to hear the gospel uh, for us to do a Bible study when they're sitting there, you know, stomach rumbling, starving. So they eat first, and then they pour the word into them. They feed them, and then they feed them. So uh, we, we definitely want to keep them in, in your prayers. Uh, also, if you would like to do more than what the church body does, uh, you, you can. Get, we have many members uh, within uh, the body that give to them individually. So please get with her afterwards. And if you feel led to, then get with them and you can support them uh, on your own, not just throughout the church. Or if you want to uh, give an offering additionally uh, and, and earmark it for them, you can do that uh, as well. But, but please visit with, uh, the Cam with Cambria's family. Uh, afterwards, as I said, they'll be set up with a table out there. Speaking of kids, I want to talk about um, this. This was asked today about Wednesday nights for us. And... Um, Wednesday nights, we have anywhere from 40 to 70 young kids up here in this building. We also have youth uh, down there in the, in the other building. And um, what was asked was, you know, what, what do we do? What's our mission up here on Wednesday nights? What are we doing? You know, we feed them. Guys, it is not an after-school care program. We, we, don't, we don't do that. If we're not pointing to Christ, we don't um, take your tithes and offerings and, and, and ask people to give time in that. And... So why I'm saying that is, is that we're pouring into those kids or the people that are up here serving are pouring into those kids and, and giving them the gospel and feeding them as well. And we need volunteers. I, I don't see Nikki here now. She may have stepped out. I'm sorry, Nikki, you moved. I thought I had you over here more. I'm sorry. 
how are we doing on volunteers for the youth, Nikki? Okay. We always use more. I know we need volunteers on Wednesdays for the kids uh, up here. Hannah uh, is in Colorado today, but I know she's looking for a lot. And it's, it's a missions work that we do here. It, it's not, I mean, if you guys stood out there in that, in that uh, line where their kids are dropped off and picked up, 50% of those kids we don't see on Sunday mornings. I mean, it, it is a missions work that we're doing that we're reaching across. Most of them are from across the street, but there's others from other uh, places. And so it, it is missions. And so I just pray that you, that you pray about that and can you be used up here on Wednesday nights because that program needs volunteers. We, we need a lot of volunteers. Um, so please be in, in prayer on that. Um, our next um, mission that we, that we work on, we do not – we don't do not give financial support. Uh, will you guys go ahead and go to Love in Action? Yeah, Love in Action. Uh, what we do is we provide meals. So Love in Action is a homeless uh, and poor um, facility in Athens, Texas. We asked Butch about a year and a half ago to hey look and see what things that we feel like fit into what. Um, fits into the DNA of our church of what we can help with. And, guys, it was disappointing the number of things that Butch came back and said, hey, this is supposed to be a Christian-based organization, but they don't share the gospel at all. They, they may pass out food, but there's no message to them. And so one thing that we found was this love in action is that th- there is a message that's given to them. It's a, it's a shelter, not a shelter, it's a building in uh, Athens, that a church owned, they gave it, they donated it to Love in Action. And go ahead and go to the next slide. I don't have my clicker with me. Um, it's, a, it's a homeless day center. Uh, we know that sometimes people find themselves in need, even desperate need, and we are here to help. We serve our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness and are sleeping on the street, those who have a temporary shelter or that move from one place to another. And we also help folks who have uh, shelter uh, but have no utilities. And so what they provide is, and you guys can go ahead and go through the slides and I'll, I'll talk. They provide a hot lunch. Uh, three days uh, a week, I believe, is what it is. We have, through our community groups, we provide uh, those. We, we, they ask us only to commit to six this year. We want to step, up, step it up and go uh, monthly next year. And so what the community groups have done is they get together, they, they cook a meal. Uh, someone within that group, or if, if they can't, somebody from in the church delivers it on those days. And the, this lady's like that you just saw right there, stay and serve it. We don't even have to stay and, and serve. But uh, the people that come in there, they have... Uh, access to washers and dryers, and they have access to, to showers, and they get a hot meal, and they get a message uh, of, of the love that Christ has for them. And so we, um, we support that. They, they've told us really at this time there's not really a financial need. You'll see there's some things that you can do. If um, a food bag or a toiletry bag, if you just want to bring them $5, that will provide a food bag for people that are homeless in Athens. And let me tell you, I was shocked. They said that through studies, and what they've been told is there's 250 people in Athens that are homeless. Um, most of them live along the railroad tracks in the woods. Um, but, and then they have a toiletry bag that for $20, these things can be provided uh, for them. But uh, the lady who started this uh, had a heart. She grew up very uh, poor, and she wanted to pour into people in Athens that were in poverty level or in need of some type of housing, and, and that message gets to them three times a week. So if you're interested, there'll be uh, I'll be out there and, and can visit with you on the things that we know on that. Um, but it's a great uh, thing that we're able to pour into through our community groups. We want to step that up next year, but we need we need people in community groups say, hey, we want to do this. We want to take this on. We want to be part of this. We want to he- we want to help spread the word in Athens to the homeless people there. Okay, so I'll be out there. You can visit with me afterwards. Uh, the next uh, couple that's coming up, uh, man, selfishly, I am so so sad to know what their plans are. Kingdom wise, I am so, so excited for them and just how that they've served here at our body and the, the things I and mean, just with such a great spirit. I know they're gonna be awesome and amazing and God's gonna use them in just phenomenal ways of uh, what of where they're going to go. But we have Solo and Hannah. They're gonna share with you guys what their plans are and um, how that you uh, can be part of that. So love you guys. I'm going to start crying now, Trey. Uh, yeah, so uh, I know y'all are probably like, what are y'all doing up there? Uh, they're not on missions. We're going to keep them. 
Um, but yeah, we're just, uh, first of all, just so excited. We thank, just thank y'all so much for just giving us the opportunity to share. Um, we just love this church. We love what it stands for, what it does. We are, yeah, just so grateful. We've been here for uh, going on three years, and if you know that timeline, that's like the end of Acts and uh, all of Exodus, <laughs> and uh, now going into John. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I told you about how long that's been. Um, and, uh, yeah, but we're so grateful for a pastor, really, really are that. It just really takes the time out of, you know, his whole entire life to just, um, uh, just to uh, really go, to, go through the Bible verse by verse. And, and man, and three years ago, we, we don't think we would have been here today if it wasn't for our pastor and, and really just, uh, you know, yeah, we can give him a hand. Yeah. Um, because if you know him, you know there's there's two things he's pre the, that he really well to us that really stick out is it's not about your position or it's not about your performance it's about your position right and the second one is kingdom purpose just kingdom purpose kingdom purpose and when you hear that back to back every Sunday I know a lot of y'all like me are and us are driving back home and are like man what is our kingdom purpose like are we doing it wrong because <laughs> but uh, yeah we're we just when you hear every every Sunday's um, and that just sticks to you, you know, that when you're, when you're on your time with the Lord, you have nothing else but to talk to him about, like, God, like, what is our kingdom purpose? And, and we just really want to, want to, want to live that out and, and, and really just, uh, yeah, yeah. So we, uh, been talking with a bunch of our, uh, the elders here, walking with people and, um, yeah, for the last three years and, and we really decided to give our yes to the Lord. And, um, so yeah, that means that we're going to be selling our house. We are going to be, yeah, just laying down our careers and living, leaving our family, our friends, and our beautiful church family, and i um, going to miss those hugs, AJ, man. <laughs> like, you know, um, yeah, but yeah, we just really want to live that call out from the Lord, uh, just kind of especially with the way that the world is, right? We just really know that we want to lead people just and join God, really, in what he's doing, just in a deeper level, just really... Um, leading people in a life of worship, uh, just really going into the nations and, and, and just seeing the Great Commission fulfilled. And, um, yeah, Hannah's going to speak a little bit more of what we'll be doing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try not to cry. Man, we love you guys. This is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, okay. Yeah, so we previously served with YWAM. If you're not familiar, that's Youth with a Mission. It's a nonprofit missions organization that's international. And so you might be familiar, there's actually one in Lindale, Tyler, Texas. We met in YWAM. I was in YWAM for about eight years and met Salo in 2017. He came to do a discipleship training school and I was there training and discipling our staff, training students, taking them overseas. And so we're going back. Um, after three years, we just feel this call, like, God, we have to go. And so, yeah, man, it's heavy. So, yeah, so we're going back. We uh, feel like the Lord's saying go, so we just said yes. And um, the campus we're going to be partnering with is in Colorado Springs, which is actually where we met. Their focus is the 1040 window, and if you're not familiar, that is... They're, it's known as the least reached part of the world, the latitude and longitude 1040 on the globe. Um, so you'll hear, it's a, a lot of really undeveloped nations. You'll see Nepal and Cambodia and Thailand are some of the places that we've gone in the past. And so we are going back with them. And um, you guys probably might be aware, but our heart is for worship. It's just everything that beats in us is to make space for the presence of God. Um, we believe he speaks to us there. We believe things happen in that space. And so we called the base directors there that we know, and we said, hey, man, we really, this is burning in us. They run a school of worship at other locations, but not in Colorado Springs. And so we said, this is what we want. Does it fit? Does it fit with what you're doing? Does it fit with the direction of the campus? Is there space for it? And they told us they we've been praying for someone to come and fill this role for three years. And so... I did not plan to cry this much. <laughs> and so that was just such a deep confirmation in our hearts to be like, okay, God, this is what you're doing, and, and this is where we're going. So we are 
going back. Saul's going to talk about the timeline of that, but we have partnered with them. We're going to go back and pioneer a school of worship and take that into the nations and take teams into the nations, train and develop uh, young leaders to go into the nations, um, specifically in the 1040 window to, to share the gospel and, and partner with other local ministries that are already there and, and developed and, and help develop certain things that the locals are already doing. So I'll pass to Saul for what that looks like. Yeah, um, we didn't write crying in all of our, <laughs> uh, so it throws me off. Of, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, to say that we haven't been impacted by this church is, is, we would just be lying. I mean, with all the ministries it does offer, whether it's re-engaged, whether it's regen, whether it's Monday night ministries, uh, worship, whatever it is, coming on Sunday and just hearing the word, we are just so blessed to just have been here and even just if it was like uh, setting a footprint over here or whatnot. But um, yeah, to do this full time, um, every missionary on uh, YWAM, even the, the founder up to his last day, was uh, uh, he rose full support. And uh, yeah, he built a support team, which was financially and also uh, through prayer. And uh, yeah, one of the reasons we're here is because we, we're looking for uh, co-laborers to just join us and, and partner with us in what God's already doing. And uh, just go deeper into that and uh, just uh, also allow you to be a part of that. And, um, yeah, so whether that's, uh, yeah, giving commitments to a one-time or monthly donations or just even joining our prayer team, we would love to catch up with you, talk to you, just share more of our vision, our heart, uh, what we will be doing. And really, tremendously, we're, 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 we're also processing this. Like, we're excited to go, kind of like Trey said, but we're also just grieving our are, are leaving our church family, uh, you know, leaving our families. Um, I, you know, we thought we had set our roots here, and we were like, man, we're so excited. But really, the Lord is, what the Lord wants is what the Lord, you know, <laughs> gets. You can't run away because Jonah, Jonah tried to do that, and uh, that didn't work. But, yeah, we're we're so thankful, uh, yes, just to even get to share. And, um, and we are planning on hitting out in January 2025. So we are trying to be fully funded by then. And, um, yeah, so we still get to see y'all until that point. And, uh, yeah, we're so thankful. Yeah. Thanks. We're going to have Dave pray over you uh, guys today. And, man, um, to hear that uh, YWAM has been praying for this for three years, I am thankful selfishly that God did not answer that three years ago because uh, it's been a blessing to have you guys here and we love you guys so much and and um, man what an amazing thing that the places that the word of God is the least talked about in the world you get to train people to go worship and sing the Lord now so do you pray over them please Father God we just uh, so grateful for Solo and Hannah we're so grateful for the adventure that they're about to start out on we call the angels down around them and that baby. Oh, Father, I just pray for every every life that they're going to touch. And we thank you that we get to keep them until January. Pray that they sing a lot. <laughs> and uh, we just ask that you just continue to fund them and support them, God, and just place it on people's hearts uh, exactly what they need. You always come through, God. And just thank you. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. So to make sure that you understood, they have to fully fund uh, themselves. They'll be working full time uh, there at YWAM, and um, they're they only have that job. They've got the job of of trying to raise support uh, for the word to be sent out to the nations. Um, so this uh, next, we're going to watch a um, a slide. Uh, this is near and dear to my heart. But uh, Sean, will you go ahead and get uh, Hope slide going, please, or video? So we're going to watch a video on the Hope Pregnancy Center that is in Canton. And... Um, these people do amazing work. While they're pulling this up, I'll just go ahead and tell you some of the things that they do. Um, once again, we talk about 
anything that we want to be part of is pointing to Christ. So someone comes in and they're in a crisis and they are pregnant. Um, it's amazing how they pour into them. They provide them with a sonogram so that they see the baby. Um, they decide, we pray, to keep that child. There's opportunities for them to, uh, they have a little boutique, boutique there that uh, to where they can come in and get uh, clothes up to two years old, uh, diapers, supplies. They get more points for that by uh, attending parenting classes, that's a Christ-centered parenting class, and by doing a Bible study with a mentor there. So they get points for that, that then they can use those points to go in and get those uh, supplies. Um, we, as a church, have um, not been involved with financial support as a church body. We've been, uh, except for, they have their Hope Gala that's coming up. We, we, we uh, make a donation to that. And then also our men a few months back went as a group and did some work of painting and sanding and doing some, some other work there on uh, the building. But there's lots of opportunities for you, whether uh, men and women. They have a men's um, mentor program also. I believe there's three men. Is that right, Monica? There now, three or four, that mentor fathers and, and teach them how to be uh, a godly father. Um, but it's an amazing uh, ministry, and uh, we're lucky to get to be part of it. You're good, Sean. Let's watch it. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your S.O.S. Your S.O.S. Send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true. I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be a shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your rest always, your rest always. I will send out.
They have a, uh, the Hope Gala is on August the 24th uh, in Canton. Uh, the things that uh, they do have a list here because there's so much stuff there. Let me make sure I don't leave anything out. So they offer sonograms, as I said. They offer parenting classes, which uh, includes development of the unborn child, letting the mother know what type of pregnancy stages that she'll be going through and what to expect, uh, the baby's development. They have Christian-based parenting uh, skills and men's ministry that includes fatherhood parenting classes and mentorship. The Hope Store has clothes for 2T and under for gently used uh, clothes. They provide diapers and wipes and books and toys. Um, and then, as I said, they earn points by attending Bible study classes and parenting classes to help them um, get those um, uh, supplies there. So it's an amazing um, ministry that, that's performed there in Canton, Texas. Um, Monica uh, will be at the table if you would like to get more information on how you could give, serve. Uh, there's tickets to the Hope Gala that you could go online and purchase uh, as well. Uh, that are $50 that I know that, that supports uh, that ministry. Um, but please visit with her if you have any questions, if that's uh, part of your heart. We saved the best for last. Um, in um, this area, we're very fortunate that uh, Butch and Michelle Smith uh, are the FCA uh, directors. Um, and so we, we want to make sure that uh, we give them opportunity to talk about how that, uh, we can help more with FCA as a church. Uh, we give to FCA uh, through Butch and Michelle. And then uh, I know individually there's, there's people within the body that do as well. And, and the same as Solo and Hannah. They have to raise 100% of their own support uh, for that. So Butch, uh, Michelle, if y'all or whoever's coming up, Butch, um, Michelle's pointing at Butch, shake her head. She's not going to speak with you, Butch. <laughs> She's fine with coffee and donuts, but she does not want to be up here. Well, what a, an amazing morning already. As we see the opportunity for us to join God in what he's doing around the world. Uh, the cooperative program none of our missionaries to the SBC have to raise support. Everything is paid for them because of the donations from other churches. We give that money and then we support those missionaries that way. It's one way for you to raise mission support. Everybody that's here today, we have to raise our own support, our own salary, our own ministry expenses. And so it's really important if you do nothing else for us that you would pray for us. Pray for God to provide. You see, the problem isn't finances for any of us. God's got enough money in his people. The problem is y'all just hang on to it too much. <laughs> and so if God's laying anything on your heart, let me just say this. Man, we have an opportunity to join God in what he's doing. I mean, everything from Hope Pregnancy Center to Love in Action. I mean, these are people in the United States of America living in conditions that you just aren't aware of. Okay, Solo and Hannah, we just trust that they're being obedient to the Lord. And so, you, Michelle and I are well taken care of. If you are wanting to join ministry for us, man, take something from our table out there and pray for us. We need your prayer so that we can have kingdom in impact. But we are so much further along financially than everybody else, so just consider them first. Okay, would y'all just understand that you get to go, like, every time I go into a school, every time that I go to a stadium for some kind of event, the bridge, Martin's Mill, is with me. So pray for kingdom impact. Same thing in Guatemala, the same thing in Colorado uh, Springs, which, come on, having to move from Colorado Springs... <laughs> To Colorado, I mean, but that's okay. I, it's, I, I just assume it's God's will. And so I, I respect that uh, just 100%. Hope pregnancy. In other words, God's not called any of us to sit and, sit and soak and not be involved in missions. So find out what it is that captures your heart. And just like Jesus has captured your heart, you get involved. You get involved by praying. You get involved by giving. And you get involved by helping. And I can answer all those questions for FCA. Cambria can answer. I mean, we can answer the questions. We just want you to see what God can do through you. And what we have enjoyed through FCA, I only work for FCA part-time. I work for the bridge part-time. So two part-time jobs are a little bit harder to manage. But, but ultimately, it comes back that 
The cooperative program is making a difference. Our missionaries don't have to raise support. They get to focus all their time on the ministry. We have to take time off. They have to come back every summer so that we can continue to raise support, so that we have a salary and so that we have the money that we need for ministry expenses. You get to be involved in that. Okay? That's all I want to say, Trey. Dear Father, we just come together and lift up Butch and Michelle to you, Father, and just uh, their ministry through FCA. Father, we know the need in this area, and we're so thankful that, uh, that you've led them here and that the FCA has placed them in this area. Father, we just pray that um, you use Butch to impact kids' lives. It's just such a um, special time and special opportunity to, to bring them to you, Father. We just pray that um, selfishly across the street, that uh, that grows there, Lord, that the doors are open for him there, uh, Lord, that they're, they're just kicked in and that there's a, a huddle that started there and he's able to impact our children across the street as well, Father. We just love them and, and we just pray prayer protection for them as they travel and bring your word to, to kids and that when they pour into them and the games and everything that they, that they go through, Lord, we just pray that you give Butch peace and rest and just nourishment, uh, Lord, and just give them time to spend together and time with their families he pours into others. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Well, I think they've got some verses from Matthew that I'm supposed to read up here. I was going to do that Gospel of John stuff, but, you know, Trey took too long, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Blame that all on you, Trey. Man, it, um, you know, going to church, I know many, many of you like myself, going to church my whole life, um, what I love about what I heard here today is that we didn't make a big deal about the Bridge Fellowship and we didn't make a big deal about your money. And I think that sometimes in church we, we hear how much the church needed money and the passing the plate and the money, the money, the money, the money, and we kind of lose focus on why we're really here. And here's what I would say. I can tell you one thing I know for sure. I know why I'm here. The only reason I'm here is to teach the Bible. That is it. End the story right there. Stops right there. But I know this also, is that as far as evangelism and missions are concerned, evangelism and discipleship are two different sides of the same coin. I mean, if you got, if you got all evangelism, no discipleship, man, I mean, that, that's, that is the culture I grew up in. Get, about, get saved, get saved, get saved, get saved, and there was no discipleship in there. And then, you know, we get saved, we don't have any discipleship, and then we're missing it. What does it really mean to be saved? And then we have all kinds of struggles in that. So one, one thing that we got to think about is that everything that we heard right here, too, I love, you know, like in Guatemala, you know, they're, they're not just leading people to cross, but 12 years, I mean, 12 years, and then all the discipleship is taking place involved in that as well. Man, that is, that is, that is really, really important. So is there Bible verses I'm supposed to read, or they are? Are they there? I'm not seeing them. There they are. And the us, and y'all stand up. I know my rear was hurting before I stood up. Y'all go ahead and stand up. <laughs> the 11 disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountains where Jesus had directed them. Is that the only verse I'm reading, or is there more? <laughs> There's more? How many verses am I reading? Five? When they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, look at that, and make disciples. There it is. Make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So here's what you got to understand. Sometimes people get saved in this church and you don't know it. That's right. My two little grandsons were sitting right here last Sunday morning. We went home, we sat down, we had lunch, and led both of them in the sinner's prayer. Now, I know I told you all, sinner's prayer didn't save anybody. But that sinner's prayer is a marker for many of us. When I was 11 years old, I said that sinner's prayer, prayer didn't save me, but that's, that's the marker for me. And so, I mean, many times there's lots of people getting saved that you don't know anything about that. But here's what I do know. I do know when people are getting discipled. Because the people are getting discipled, here's what happens. They start talking about their kingdom purpose. They start talking about their position in Christ, and they move off. 
and go serve the Lord somewhere else. Man, thank God. Thank God. So what is your kingdom purpose? Let me tell you one more time. It is not a destination. It is a direction. Saul and Hannah are figuring that out as they go. Guatemala Mike, I don't know the rest of y'all's name. I just know Guatemala Mike. That's all I know. That's who we pray for. Cambry? Cambria. All right. Probably said it wrong anyway, but there we go. I tried. Thank you for coming and sharing with us today. We appreciate it so much. So, God, we thank you today. Thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And, God, we thank you that we have got a group of elders here at this church that are striving to be good stewards of the money that is being given by the body to spread this out to missions that go all around the world. So we're grateful for that today. We pray for Guatemala Mike's family. God, we pray for Butch and his ministry, FCA. We pray for Solo and Hannah. God, we pray for every ministry that we saw here today that, that we are in one way or another, that we are involved in. We pray that your hand, your mercy, and your grace would be on them. A salvation would flow through every single one of these ministries, oh God. So we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Don't go anywhere, stay right there. So, before you head out, I need you to do one more thing for me this morning. Do you think about this? Think about your involvement in each one of these ministries. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. If you're sitting on this church Sunday morning, after Sunday morning, after Sunday morning, you're involved in all these ministries. Just, I mean, you say, if you're not giving any money, you're still involved because you are here, and you just being here does more than what you realize. Never do we come in here and try to manipulate you Never do we come in here and try to put you on a guilt trip. Our desire is for you to fall in love with Jesus. When you fall in love with Jesus, everything else gets taken care of. So thank you for being here today. And I, I apologize that I lied to y'all last week and told y'all I was going to teach from, Mark, I mean, from John this morning. But that will still be waiting there next Sunday for those of us that will be here next Sunday. So here's what I need you to do. What I need you to do is I need you to get that chair that you were sitting in that was hurting your rear a while ago before you stood up. Pick it up and move against one of the outside walls before you head out of here today. And be blessed as you go today.